everyone. I want to take you on an amazing journey around the globe to Bhutan. I was in Japan. I flew into Bangkok, then over to India, and then a short flight over to Paro, which is the only airport in the entire country. Now, Paro is a very unusual airport because it's at 7,000 feet, and it's revered as one of the most dangerous airports in the world to fly into. Now, the pilots have to be totally on their A game. They're at high altitude. We're just buzzing right at the rooftops. Come in a right, a left bank turn, and into the airport. You've got to be definitely on your A game. We were very fortunate the weather was reasonable, but people actually land in bad weather at this airport. I don't know how they do it. Being a pilot, I know that's not easy stuff. When I got there, I was in awe. The terminal is beautiful. I was walking on the ground in Bhutan. This was one of my life goals to come here. Everyone pulled out their phone, was taking pictures because it's so beautiful. It's in so such an amazing place to be. And I picked up by Sange and Killa, the driver, and we began our journey. Now we landed in Paro, but then we transitioned over to Timbu. And Timbu is actually the capital, and that's where the king resigns and the prime minister. And there are animals everywhere. They're walking down the middle of the street as you see this cow. Everything's free. There are no fences anywhere. Everybody kind of just does whatever they want. They're known in this country by gross national happiness. And I mean, you know, everyone's pretty chill here. There's no big deal. Everyone's pretty mellow, very quiet place. And then we went up to one of the giant Buddhas, one of the biggest in Asia. It's very beautiful. Again, very fortunate. I mean, the weather was very nice, which I couldn't believe. And then this is overlooking the city of Tembu. This is the capital. We went to some other very famous stupas that were beautiful. These are the prayer wheels that you turn as you go around and you say your prayers. And this is a beautiful stupa that was built in honor of one of the kings of Bhutan. And we went to an open air market. And I love these markets, but you know, I'm not really a big organic person, but in Bhutan, everything's organic because they don't use any pesticides at all. So it's really, truly organic. And this is the only signal they have in the entire country. It's not a signal. They have people directing traffic. And of course, the dogs are just laying in the middle of the street because everybody's free there to do whatever they want, pretty much. We went to one of the highest mountain passes in the country. It's 10,000 feet. They have a whole bunch of stupas up there. And I walked around and had a great time, took some really cool photographs. And from there, we dropped down into the famous valleys of Bhutan where all the rice fields are. Now, these were all the rice terraces that you see when you think about Bhutan. And it wasn't the harvest time now because they'd already harvested and all the rice was then stacked up. But when you looked out, you could see they were actually beating the rice here. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. It's very interesting. So we went on a walk through the village. And I just followed along behind Singe and he showed me all kinds of cool things. This lady was actually making popped rice. So she has her little wood fire. And then I came across these guys building this amazing wood home all mortise and tenon and look how sharp these tools are razor sharp and i love it this one is a chisel on the end and then a knife on the other part so he does everything with this one tool then bevels the edge and then he drops the tenon into the mortise so he can fit it and make sure everything's perfect really great craftsmanship and he has a square it's a wooden square he keeps it in his shirt and that's how he lays everything out for the mortise and tenon joints very very cool they use power planers a little bit for the most part everything's done by hand they use a little bit of power but here it all is right in the middle of the farms they're building all these wooden homes all by hand pretty much pretty cool stuff and then this is where they were actually beating the rice out of the cane if you will and they basically stack it up and then they just start beating it over this rock and then all the rice falls out. When they're done, they're done. And then this is another prayer wheel and a little monk sitting there and we went by that, it's really cool. And this lady's planting garlic actually in her field one by one, one garlic clove at a time. There you go. And the interesting thing is all the gar garlic there is red. It's not white because the white is bleached, but they don't do any of that there. And then look at this fabulous monastery. This is just unbelievable. We went up to this valley and there are two rivers that come together, a female and a male river, they called it. Beautiful wooden bridge. And we walked across it. And of course, what was there? A cow walking across, very cool. And I followed him into the monastery. And when I got into the monastery, spectacular now the embellishment on all the window treatments and the details 
on these monasteries is over the top. But the truth of the matter is they do pretty much the same thing on everyone's house. Everybody has these beautiful windows. And I saw this window factory in the middle of a field. I stopped and took some photographs and video. And all these curves, they're all carved out by hand. No jigsaws, nothing. They do everything by hand with very, very sharp tools. I went over, here's his toolbox with all his tools. And then I went across this beautiful bridge. This is a cable bridge, very common to see this in this area and region. In Nepal, when I went to Everest Base Camp, I walked across a whole bunch of these. Now see the red stuff on top of the roof? Those were all red peppers that are drying. They love peppers, everything's really spicy. This was the home that I actually stayed in. I did a homestay and actually stayed in a Bhutanese home. It was amazing, slept on the floor. And this is Tuga, she was just wonderful. And she asked me what I wanted in the morning. I said, I want an omelet with everything in it. She goes, I never made it before, but I'll watch YouTube. I couldn't believe it. She watches YouTube. In the morning, I went into the kitchen to watch her do it. It was just incredible. She's chopping up everything and she'd watch YouTube. And she said, I hope I'm making it right. But this is her kitchen in a typical Bhutanese home. It was so cool. And she was so friendly and so nice. And the omelet, well, forget it. It was over the top delicious. And the best thing is, in Bhutan, they love spicy food, and I love spicy food. They make all this really hot sauce. Everything's really hot. And then I went out for a walk in the morning. This monkey was on the roof on a leash. And look at this, the typical house. Look at those windows. Looks just like the monastery. Very common. And then all the dogs everywhere. There are dogs everywhere. There's animals everywhere, and everyone just gets along. Pretty cool stuff. Then back to Timbu, a little retail therapy into some shopping. The dogs are in the, in the shops. Very, very cool. And then we went back over to Paro. Now, the cool thing is we went over to Paro. I passed by this restaurant, which was an old home that had been converted into a restaurant. And I went inside. It was just stunning. Now, this is a wealthy person's home. But the cool thing is all Bhutanese homes are all open in the top. That's where they put all the grains, the rice, and everything air dries up there. So this is the very top looking out over the valley. They put rocks on the roof to hold the roof down for the high winds. Lots of cool stuff there. Man, I just had a ball looking around. And I love the woodworking. I love the architecture. Killa and Singe, our guide. And then we went into this restaurant they had converted. It was someone's home. And it was so beautiful, unbelievable. Then we went back up to Paro, and then we went to this monastery. Now, this place blew me away. On the way up, we saw a bunch of children walking home from school, and I did a bunch of videos, really friendly. Everybody's really cool. They all wear their traditional clothes, and I got to wear their traditional clothes actually one day as well. The kids were just a total hoot. Now, we got up to this monastery, and I just could not believe what I saw. These monasteries, all these places I'm taking you to, they're like 400 years old. So this thing's sitting on the side of a hill, and they're actually rebuilding it because a lot of it had deteriorated, and they were rebuilding it stone by stone, and it is breathtaking what they're doing. Hundreds of people building this. They've been at it for like four years now, and look at this. It's just stunning. All the bricks are put together with red clay incredible so one machine and a whole lot of people digging and stacking rock on rock now this building here with the little rocks sticking out they're actually joining on to that and they're literally chiseling every rock by hand moving every rock by hand it is crazy now this is actually how they make the pavers if you will the stones they walk on for in the rooms and in the courtyards and they take every rock and they split them I mean, it's really unbelievable. It takes a long time to do this. And then with the smaller ones, they make the stones that they actually build the retaining walls for. And then this is one of the original parts of the monastery. You can see how old it is. These are all the pavers that they've split and they're storing them over here in this area. And then they're all gonna be transferred over here to the area that's being fully restored to the original building and structure. And then here they are building the retaining walls for the original building. Everything's done with red clay, and notice four guys watching, one guy working, kind of like Caltrans worker. Uh, anyways, you don't know that joke, don't worry about it. Anyways, but actually, everybody's always working for the most part here. Occasionally, you see people standing around, but for the most part, really hard workers, and these people are really diligent and great craftsmen. There's all the red clay stacking every brick by hand. Really, this is an amazing effort. I was blown away by the craftsmanship. I was just like, wow, this is really something. Every rock. Could you imagine how much time it takes to do all this? And look how beautifully straight, and it's just gorgeous. These are the monks. 
These are the monks who are going to live there, and this is where all the workers work. This is a village off to the side that I notice, and here they are splitting these huge rocks with just a sledgehammer, breaking them apart. I learned a lot about rock splitting actually by watching all the. Here it is. He hits it like crazy, then it splits open. Hit it about 30 times. I'm fast forwarding this. Then it splits open, and you get a nice flat paper out of the whole thing. And that's how they do every rock in this building. And there they are, all stored in the old part of the old structure. And then this is looking across, and this is the new section they're rebuilding. Just absolutely amazing. Now, this is the original wall. I'm looking down there, you know, probably about 40 or 50 feet down. I could fall down and kill myself. But I wanted to show you the perspective how this is built and then panning up to the structure they're rebuilding. It is just over the top. More red peppers as we came down off the mountain. And then these young kids playing. They were just absolutely adorable. You'll see some more great pictures of them at the end of this video. But they were just adorable. Then the next day, we went up to. I think it's called the Raven's Nest. This is a monastery built steep on the side of a cliff. I think it's almost, you know, 8,000 feet up in the mountains. We hiked up there. It was just an amazing hike. It took me all day to get up there. We stopped at a little tea house and got coffee, and all the dogs were there. And look at how they built these things deep up into the rock bases. Just incredible. And there's the monastery I'm going to. So I'm going to hike down, around, over this little waterfall, and this is it. I'm looking up at it. And this is a holy site. And I walked up there. You had to take off your shoes. It's very, very cool. This is looking across at it from the tea hut where I had tea. It was just absolutely unbelievable where they built this thing. And it was really, really beautiful as well. It's a great experience. And you know me, I've always got to say, what's up there, Sange? And there was another stupa way up high in the mountains. And I said, I want to go up there. Can we go? I said, sure, if you want, but it's a lot further. So we went on the trek up to the top of the stupa. Unbelievable. You will not believe what you're going to see. Nobody else went up there but me and Sange. And wow, take your breath away. I hung my feet out over the edge of the cliff just to put it in perspective. Change your view. Change your view. Bhutan, you will never be the same again. And then when I was hiking down, I saw this little tiny puppy off in the woods. So I started following him. I mean, I followed him a long way and he was on his own little adventure. He was the cutest guy in the whole world. And then I got with Sange to ask him, what is the meaning of life? Hello, I'm in uh, Bhutan with my good friend Sange. And Sange, I just asked you, I'm writing a book about lean life and about life. And I asked you, what are the important things we should know about life? from a country that focuses on gross national happiness. What are they, Sanke? Happiness, to become, uh, to be happiness, we have to have, so, like, uh, first thing is be passion. Passion? Yeah. Okay. Passion is just uh, one thing. Always, whatever we do in our life, we have to be patient. We have to be no, patient? I mean, yeah, patient. Okay. If you take, uh, take that one in hurry, like, fast way, then in some way, in some way we get a mistake on the way ah. that is the thing we have to check it on the slowly slowly we slowly. have to think thousand times to do everything ah. yeah okay. and one is a good health good health yes if you have a good health you can do everything in your entire life if you don't have good health you have nothing. then you are in the like hell or like in kind of suffering yes yeah that is about uh, the life that and about the happiness that we have to be sunday thank you we had a beautiful day today yeah isn't sunday amazing i miss him so much and on the way down the wind started to blow and all the needles came out and this is typical bhutanese food rice potatoes mixed vegetables everything's organic because they don't use any chemicals in the country eggplant salad curry chicken and my favorite fruit for dessert this is the most famous thing in bhutan chili cheese cheese mixed with chili peppers both green and red and orange absolutely delicious and very spicy
then you know me, I gotta know how they make this chili cheese. It's incredible. So I went back into the kitchen. Sangay knew everybody there. It was so cool. And they actually showed me how to make it. They cut it all up, put the cheese on it, put water in it, put some oil in it, and then stir it up for about 15 minutes, put the lid over it, let it simmer, and we're done. I said, let's make some cauliflower pizza. So we went back to the store, got all the ingredients, went back to the restaurant, Sang I knew everybody, so he, they said okay, and we made cauliflower pizza. No meat or anything. It was fantastic, all organic, delicious. Went by the prayer wheels in the town on the last day when I'm ready to get out of there. Saw this really cool little sewing shop with all these people in there working away. It was colorful and beautiful and everybody was friendly. And then look at the airport. I got to the airport, this beautiful woodworking, this fantastic, spectacular airport, high in the mountains, 7,000 feet got out to my plane and took off and said, Bhutan, I will never be the same. Sange and Killa, you are amazing. And these are some of my favorite photographs that I took when I was there. I did everything on my iPhone. So nothing super high end, but boy, did I have a lot of fun taking pictures of all kinds of interesting things from the bamboo scaffolding to the beautiful rice terraces, to the piles of rice that they stack up, to the lady making the beautiful popped rice, to all the woodwork and in the fields and the trucks hauling everything and the red peppers it was just unbelievable the monasteries the woodworking the windows the embellishment the monks I always say the monks have it made they live in the most beautiful places but the dogs don't have it bad either because it's a beautiful country and a beautiful place with fantastic food and there I am in my Bhutanese outfit I rented a motorcycle for one day can you believe it and just had a great time the architecture is incredible I think I know where green and green got some of their influence boy these huge roofs that overhang to protect from the weather and the forest with the moss growing and the cats it was just over the top my puppy in the middle of the woods and the children oh my gosh it was just incredible the photography with the children and the prayer wheels ah just incredible the villages the markets the people i want to go back this is a typical bhutanese backpack and of course the cauliflower pizza and the workers and the craftsmanship and the children it just goes on and on what a great place. No hurry, no worry. You're in Bhutan. And I got to tell you, it's a very special place. It was on my bucket list to go there. I never really thought I'd get there this quickly, but I said, I got to get there before this country changes because it's becoming more and more popular. And it is really a remote place in the middle of nowhere. And if you like spicy food, they got chili everywhere. And the people, wow, over the top, all with my iPhone been to 101 countries. Bhutan, I'll never be the same. Thanks for this amazing experience. Thank you, Sange and Killa, for an awesome job. I love Bhutan.